I'm going to try to uncomplicate a very complicated issue, uh, and I'll do my best uh, to, to handle uh, this topic. This is uh, something that we probably get asked more about than anything else, and, there's so, and that's about sonar, GPS, side view, down view, 360, uh, and all, all the different types of things that are available to us today. And, uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you how I use it, and I'm going to tell you about some new stuff that I'm going to try to learn this year, uh, along with the rest of us, because it's brand new. It's going to be hitting the water for the first time this year, some, some things. And, uh, and I know Ish is a Lawrence guy, and I know if you have any specific questions about that product, I'm sure Ish can handle that for you as well. But um, the first thing I'm going to talk about and, and I talked already when we were in a breakout session about getting confidence in your sonar. Understanding what you're seeing and how to act on it. How many people see been out there with their sonar and it, it's lit up with fish, but you can't make them bite? Or you're seeing stuff and you just don't know what it is or what it means to you. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to help you gain some confidence. If I, if I can do that in the next hour, I'll be real, real pleased with that. And I'll, I'll tell you how I'd, I've done it. And I'm going to tell, talk a lot about, because there's so many good brands out there. There's uh, Lowrance, there's Humminbird, Garmin's coming out with some fantastic new stuff. Uh, there's Raymarine. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of great sonar companies out there that are really jumping into the freshwater fishing market, making some brilliant electronic stuff for us to use. Um, I want to challenge you to, to use it, but not to get so caught up in it that it distracts you from your objective, which is what? Catching fish, right? That's what we want to do. We're, we're using this stuff to catch fish, and we want to make sure that the things that we're, we're, the time we're spending with it are designed to help us better understand how to catch fish. One of the things I do on Lake Erie a lot, and all big bodies of water, is that they're massive, right? It would take an eternity to idle the entire lake system. So what I've learned to do is recognize what a bass looks like at 30 miles an hour on your sonar unit. That is so important. I don't even stop to fish on, when I'm fishing offshore at Lake Erie or the bigger lakes unless I see the markings that tell me that there's some fish there. And at 30 miles an hour, usually a fish is going to look like the tip of your finger stuck on a rock pile or coming up off the bottom. That's it. He's going to be on cover and it's going to look just like a little blip. And the reason why that is, is when you're going that fast, the cone on your sonar is moving so fast, a fish is only in that cone for an instant. And your, your computer only has a moment to interpret it, and that's the way it typically shows it up. So I'll run at 30 miles an hour across these massive flats looking for high spots that have these little tiny blips. Right, that's, that's a key deal. Now, how, how did I know that's what it looked like? Here's how I figured that part of it out. I, I got on a, I was fishing shoals, deep water fish, out on Lake Erie, and I started catching them on a little high spot. There was a lot of fish there, right? Well, what, so what did I do? I picked up my trolling motor and I drove over them. I idled over them, I looked at, I saw what my sonar looked at idle when there was a school of active feeding fish on a shoal. It's huge to recognize that. I mean, it sounds so simple and obvious, but a school of suspended fish that you can't catch looks a lot different on the bottom than a school of active fish that are biting, right? The active fish that are biting are tight to the bottom, typically, and that's one key to recognize them. Suspended fish that are hard to catch are gonna be just a little bit up. They're gonna look completely different on your sonar. So then what I, I ran over to 30, 40, 50 miles an hour and I looked at it and I recognized, I, I quickly learned that fish that are actively feeding kind of look like nothing. They look like almost nothing and most people will just drive right past them and not even see them. So you want to look for that little tiny mark. I hope you enjoyed the preview clip and for more like that and the entire collection, subscribe to the Bash University TV. And if you want the tackle that you see on there, I want you to go to the Bash University Tackle Shop, powered by Tackle Warehouse, and click right here 
and it's all at your fingertips. You want to become a better angler? You want to catch more and bigger bass at your local pond? Then check out Bass University TV for hardcore bass fishing information. Hey, I'm Pete Gluzek. And I'm Mike Iaconelli. And this is Bass University TV. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Everywhere I go in the country, I'm trying to use these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action that's going to allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're going to catch the big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not going to hear anywhere else. This is the Bash University TV exclusive.